Well, since I'm back again and doing videos again until I inevitably take a hiatus again, it does mean some good things. You get to hear some of my rantings and ravings. And just as importantly, I get to hear from you guys and answer some of your questions in a Q&A video. Yes! How exciting. Well, excuse me, since it's wrestling, we have to do the old, yes! 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 Alright. So, thanks to all of you that took to Twitter to ask your questions. Look forward to answering some of them. As always, can't get to every single question. Um, so, those of you that asked them and didn't get answered this time, try again next time. You never know. You never know. But if you want them to get on camera and you want me to answer them, try to make them good. Think about it not from a standpoint of just, I want a question answered. It is, what do I think that this guy is actually going to enjoy answering what is potentially going to evoke a reaction out of him one way or another, and it might more, be more likely to get on camera. Anyways, let's go ahead to the questions. Alpha Wolf, what are your overall thoughts on AEW, and who do you like in AEW? I've had to say the three characters right now that I'm biggest on are Luchasaurus. I think everybody should know that by now. MJF, everybody should know that by now. And then I've definitely converted over to the Orange Cassidy side of the fence. So those are certainly be the top three. There are others, but those are the three like notables. Like if I said, those are my dudes, those three would be my dudes. Uh, my overall thoughts on AEW. Um, trying, trying to stay back just a little bit. Um, I appreciate the alternative. I appreciate something different. I wish they would do better at telling stories and actually telling good stories and that they would feature more characters. Like to me, part of the reason you do this is you want to be counterculture to WWE at a time. By God, do we really need a counterculture to WWE? The way you don't do that is a bunch of crash test dummy tag matches sprinkled throughout a two hour show. Like do that, take a look at what you want to be identify a brand, identify an identity, figure out in every way that you could be different from Vince's company, and then go be different from Vince's company. Doing a bunch of spots and a bunch of matches that have little buildup with a bunch of characters that you don't know much about and you don't care about is not counterculture. And my hope is that as time goes along, you figure that out a little bit more. There will always be a part of it that will annoy me because it's going to have some of those hardcore elements, and I don't say hardcore in terms of wrestling, but the hardcore fan type of elements where they're going to appeal to that and it just, no. Get as big of an audience as you possibly can. Stop stop fucking around with the stuff that isn't going to make you a crap ton of money. Uh, K. Nokaj asks, rank four to one, who would you have liked to see Owen Hart wrestle against? Guerrero, Angle, Y2J, and he who shall not be named. Uh, four, three, two, one. Uh, in WWE, I would probably say uh, Angle four, Eddie three, Jericho two, and who who shall not be named one, uh, because of the simple fact that Owen Hart going out there and wrestling against the Invisible Man. I mean, he could work. He could make that match work, and that would be something to truly see. So that has to be the point, doesn't it? At Keys10 asks, what's more likely to happen? Raw getting 3.5 million viewers or AEW having a competent women's division? <laughs> Woo! Both of them seem incredibly unlikely at this point. That said, I will defer to AEW having a competent women's division because I think that's a lot easier to get to than Raw doubling its audience from what it currently is. Like, if you had to just look at the odds, the odds would be overwhelming that AEW could somehow, someway, stop being idiots and actually put out a competent, credible women's division before Raw is going to all of a sudden double their damn audience. Like, I, I would never see that happen again. I would highly doubt they'll ever even get to 2.5 million viewers again on a consistent basis, let alone 3.5 million viewers. Good Lord, there's no way. Eric Rivera Cueva. Is WWE developmental for Hollywood or a stepping stone for other projects? Uh, I think more and more it becomes that, and frankly, they should embrace it. Like, think about it. If you're somebody that wants to be an actor, you want to be an action star or something along those lines, you can go to WWE. You're going to have to work on your body, you would hope. 
be in great shape. You're going to get familiarity and comfort level with working in front of the camera, understanding, you know, camera shots and angles and timing and all of those other components. You get familiar with how to tell a story, how to be a character in theory, at least, but in modern wrestling, they don't bother being characters or telling stories anymore. You get a national television platform, you get exposure, that fan base can come along with you as you would transition into television or movies. Like to me, I would look at that and I would say, even for those folks that don't have a great passion for professional wrestling, use it as a platform to elevate you to other things. And as far as the company goes, like beggars can't be choosers at this point. If you can find great talents that you don't know are going to be great wrestlers, but you can make some money with them, then they are just going to use you as a platform or a stepping stone to other things, then do it. Like beggars can't be choosers at this point. Uh, at Platon County, what makes the current worse? Uh, the lack of audience or the bad storytelling in characters? If you're talking about what makes the current wrestling worse. Um, it's the bad storytelling in characters. Now, granted, the lack of audience doesn't help. The lack of audience at times can hurt. Because even when you're watching at home, you can feed off of the emotion of the live audience. But if the storytelling is great and the characters are enthralling and entertaining and captivating and suck you in, and it's not so much about getting you to suspend disbelief or get you to believe, it's about just disconnection from reality, get you to at least be immersed, then the lack of audience wouldn't matter so much. It's the bad storytelling. It's the lack of characters. It's that lack of star presence. That's the problem. That's the much bigger problem. Uh, fix that Tyson ass. Thoughts on MJF? I enjoy MJF. He is different. He is certainly something that is necessary in AEW. I would love to see him be their next world champion. Um, although I know inevitably what that at some point would eventually lead to, and that makes me want to gag. Uh, that said, I wonder if there's going to be a true appreciation for him and what he can do uh, and what he represents. Like right now, he's a bit of a novelty because he is, in, in my opinion, so different than most of what they've got on that roster. Is like He's cool because he's the one thing that's different or cool. Like He actually is a character. So I, I enjoy him. I would be looking at him if I'm AEW, looking at my roster. He would certainly be one of the guys I would really be building around for the long term. Um, but I don't know how they view him what they think of him long term. Wrestling Rants asks, how low will the ratings get before Vince actually tries to make new stars and compelling TV? Or does WWE go out of business before Vince would consider making new megastars again? <laughs> if they go out of business, it won't matter at that point. Um, I think at least from a, the, the sad thing is, is Vince is so out of touch and so disconnected with reality and has a really horrible lack of checks and balances within his infrastructure of his organization that um, as far as trying to make compelling TV, he's trying to make what he thinks is compelling TV and it's just going over like a fart in church. Like it just isn't working. And that's probably the worst part about it is sometimes it could be misrepresented saying, well, Vince doesn't care. And Vince, I, I think he still does. And that's, I think actually makes it worse is he does care and he doesn't know how to get the hell out of his own way. He doesn't know how to make it better. That, to me, is the issue. That, to me, is the concern. That, to me, is the real problem. Jaime Alada Isidro. Most overrated wrestler right now in WWE and AEW. Um, oh, AEW, to me, I think it's the young bucks. The bucks have suck in terms of their ring work all effing day. Not even close. Like, it's a shame, too. Because these are guys that could do some great, incredible, athletic feats. And I want to I want to say that this version of the Bucks of Suck, the Young Bucks, doesn't annoy me nearly as much as a New Japan or ROH version. They've toned down the act some. But when it comes to their matches, like, I'm sorry. There's got to be a little consequence of purpose to what you're doing. These guys just bump around and they flip around. They take too long setting up moves to the point where it takes something that already looks questionable and makes it flat out staged and fake, which annoys the ever-loving crap out of me and should annoy other wrestling fans too. I look at these guys and I say, man, imagine if you were actually characters. Imagine if you could actually tell stories. 
as characters. Imagine if you could actually tell stories that didn't involve you having to bump around in the damn ring. Imagine how much more those bumps would matter if you could actually do that. They don't want to and they don't seem to care to. And as a result, I get annoyed with them and I get annoyed with those people that think they're great. They're great within that hardcore bubble and that is it. They're stupid. Freaking hate them. And the most overrated wrestler right now in WWE, like admittedly, I don't even know if I have my finger on the pulse enough for people to sit there and have shared enough opinions that I've actually seen. If I had to guess, I would say Adam Cole. I don't hate the dude. Like, he doesn't annoy me or anything like that. It's not like a bucks of suck situation. But I honestly look at Adam Cole and I say, what's the big deal? You know what? Let me scratch that. Undisputed Era. Another bland-ass faction with a bunch of guys my size. Why the hell do I have to care about them? And the issue is not their size. Let me make that clear since we clearly have listening problems in the Hawaii WC. The issue is not the size. The issue is, is they are just another group of the same size. It is a lack of variety, a lack of spice, a lack of difference. You need big guys, you need small guys, you need medium-sized guys, you need fat guys, you need skinny guys, you need muscle-bound guys, you need obese guys, you need all of that. And to me, they're just bland. Like, I've never gotten, what's the appeal of Undisputed Era? Oh my God, they're awesome because Dave Meltzer's told me they're awesome. Well, screw Dave. Someday you guys will realize just how biased he is and just how much he is in the tank for certain companies and certain styles. Dread the very day that he got all this sway and influence over wrestling. Good Lord. Playmaker Ghetto. Will there be a dark side of the ring about Marty Jannetty? Certainly seems like it's trending that way. Ooh. I know that dude's been crazy for a long time, but man, sometimes just shut the hell up. Chrysler San Martin, why do you keep praying to a false god, ugh, that cannot beat a dead show like AEW? Really? You, you, want, you always want to go there with the blasphemy. You always want to go there with the non-believing. You ever notice how the people in the a average world so do talk about oh, the doctor prayers are with you, the doctor prayers. You ever notice how they don't do a thing? Well, when you pray to him, when you pray to him, uh, miracles can happen. You have seen this. It has been so evident. Just sheer heresy for you being suggest otherwise. Daniel William Clark, what did you think of NWA Power? Uh, in the time that I actually cared enough to watch it, there were things that I liked about it, like they were actually trying to have guys talk. They were actually trying to tell stories. They were actually trying to be characters. Uh, some of it was kind of random jandom, and I didn't always know what the hell they were truly trying to accomplish. Uh, again, though, just like on the one side where, you know, all the match mark crap I'm not huge on, the fact that you were doing this and none of the matches seemed to matter that much also bothered me. Like, even the, even the matches that were supposed to matter, you know, made, part of it was because of the time constraints that they had on them. You know, you wonder why you have time constraints. You're just airing on your YouTube channel anyway. Um, you know, the big feature matches would go four or six minutes. Like, I'm not huge on that either. Uh, maybe I'll try watching it again. I'm assuming it's still a thing. Uh, Super Zia asked, what do you think about AEW possibly getting a third hour of Dynamite? Please, for the love of God, no. Disco Ben asks, what should AEW's biggest priority be to succeed? Characters, storytelling, those are the things that matter. It's not the moves, promise you. Jack Hoare, have you ever watched the Smart Busters before? Uh, I've seen clips of them throughout the years. I, I believe they don't do it anymore. Um, I know they used to call me a twitchy-eyed F, which to, 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 to the point that they, they were right. Um, Seemed like people used to enjoy them. Be nice if they were doing this stuff again, I guess. I don't know what happened to them. I don't really follow a bunch of other people, and I certainly don't watch a bunch of other YouTubers' videos. And that's not a slight against them. That's just a reality. I just don't in general. I've got enough other things going on in my life. Uh, but, you know, I know they probably used to entertain some of you folks. I wish they were still around. Uh, Ryan J. Kroll, how do you feel with Randy Orton getting another push in 2020? Hashtag Black Breakfast Club rules. Joshua Bryan, very push main event. Keith Lee, Velveteen Dream, and Montez Ford. Well, good Lord Almighty. That's the question. Um, 
Main event is Keith Lee, and I think Push is Velveteen Dream, and unfortunately the Barry is probably Montez Ford, like out of the three. Um, you know, main event main event stuff, like Keith Lee's the guy to me that stands out, and I'm sure you guys are going to say, well, he's a big black guy, so he, of course he stands out to you, you freaking cut. I mean, come on. Look at Keith Lee and tell me that doesn't scream main event. Like, come on. Everybody needs to be 5'10", 190 pounds to be in a wrestling main event scene nowadays. Uh, while I hate the Velveteen Dream gimmick, I it annoys the ever-loving crap out of me. I hate that most of the times when a black wrestler or a non-white wrestler in WWE actually gets a push, it's got to be some type of suspect tri crap or some type of stereotypical crap, such as the Velveteen Dream. But the dude is a really good talent. He actually knows how to be a character. He can actually tell stories. So I would still want to see him pushed, as even if I wanted to eventually get him away from that gimmick. As far as Montez Ford, you know, somebody's got to be buried. That's the question. While I personally wouldn't want to bury him, I look at him at the end of the day, and I'm like, charismatic dude, can talk. But in terms of, like, ring performance, he's a dime a dozen. Like, I'd hate to lose that personality and that ability to talk, but... Not like company really does much with it anyway, so that's that. So anyways, that's it for this Q&A. Thank you to, again to everybody who submitted their questions. Hope you enjoyed this. Be back soon with another one. In the meantime, check out the channel. Subscribe. Click the bell to be notified when a new video comes up, if you would, please.